shepherd came and found me on the cliffs of sin. From that moment life has never been the same. I'm the lamb that the shepherd left the flock for. I was out in Follow in the past where he may lead me. For this shepherd Jesus is a friend of mine. I'm the lamb that the shepherd left. Open your Bibles to Isaiah 53. We will read verses 1 through 3. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. 
May the Lord bless our service this morning. Thank you, Brother Daniel, for reading to us those powerful words. That's a powerful chapter that would be well worth reading over and over again. Let me just touch base. Can everybody hear microphones on? Everybody can hear okay? I can't resist saying happy Sabbath. And for some of you, I haven't seen yet this year. So it is great to be able to be in God's house. There are lots of places you could choose to worship. And we're excited that you are here today to worship and praise our great God together. Brother Dan, thank you. I just have one tiny disagreement. I had to point it out to Brother Roger during the song. You said you were the lamb that the good shepherd went hunting for. And I suspect if we were to ask, we'd all raise our head and say, uh, Brother Dad, it was actually uh, us too. We're, we're all that precious sheep. Thank you for that powerful message and song. We could that just preach the message. Because there's nothing more important than letting our Good Shepherd rescue us and bring us home. So let's pray together, shall we? Father in heaven, thank you, thank you for being the Good Shepherd. Thank you for coming to rescue every one of us that have wandered away. And today as we open your word and as we share in this communion service, we are asking that afresh you would touch our heart. Somehow make me disappear and somehow help us see Jesus as never before. In Christ's name we pray, amen. If you have your Bibles, I would invite you to turn with me to a very famous passage of Scripture, Isaiah chapter 1. And in Isaiah chapter 1, we listen to these words from God. Isaiah chapter 1, while we're turning over there, since this was last week's memory verse, hopefully uh, we can just say it together like a big choir. But let's see how how it goes. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Driving into church today, if I passed one, I must have passed half a dozen different cars that had various amounts of snow still piled up on their car. And I have to confess, it's been one of those weeks where I prayed that we'd have a whole lot of snow right here. But apparently there were other people praying harder and God didn't see fit to give us snow right here, uh, uh, at least not very much, light dustings that, uh, that left very quickly. But any time I see snow, it reminds us, at least it reminds me, of the most important need to come to the foot of the cross. And to have our sins washed away by the power in the blood. In fact, as I read this verse, it makes me think of some other words. Had not planned to read them this morning, but you'll notice what's the first word of this verse? Come. If we travel over to Matthew chapter 11, it's another famous passage, but notice the words of Jesus. Red letters in my Bible, Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says in verse 28, come. Uh, What's the first verse in this new passage? What's the first word? Come. Same, Same first word, come. Unto me... All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Now, now, if we stop for just a moment, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me. Jesus is inviting us to focus on Him. And perhaps at the beginning of this brand new year, you are having the best year ever. And you're feeling great, and you're excited, and you can't wait for what God has in store. Or maybe this has been a tough couple of weeks, and you just barely got here today. And perhaps you are in turmoil inside your heart. Maybe you have a smile on your face, but inside you are aching and looking for hope that, brothers and sisters, only Jesus can provide. He invites us, whether it's physical rest you need, whether it's spiritual rest you need, Matthew eleven twenty eight. come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. What does it say in verse 29? Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If we were to back up to Isaiah 118, isn't that almost, different words, but the very same concept. Come now, let us Reason together. Let's talk together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as well. The year was 1883. And if you had subscribed to a church paper called The Signs of the Times, you would have received... A fascinating article, and I can't resist grabbing a couple of nuggets from it this morning. Because in this article, it starts out like this, Already has the new year been ushered in. Yet yet before we greet its coming, we pause to ask, What has been the history of the year that with its burden of records has now passed? into eternity 2020 is over it's history and I'm surprised I just heard one amen I figured everybody would say we are so glad 2020 is behind us a whole new year has started but but I continue quoting God forbid that at this important hour we should be so engrossed with other matters as to give no time to serious, candid, critical self-examination. Well, what does that mean? Let things of minor consequence be put in the background. And let us now bring to the front the things which concern our eternal interests. In in fact, if I push pause there, what does the Bible say? We've started hearing it from Jesus. If you are struggling, if you need rest, come to the foot of the cross. Let's sit down and talk. If your sins are red and scarlet, let Jesus make them white as snow. But let's dial it up just a little bit more. And, And let's go to the New Testament and listen to our friend Paul. Our friend Paul in 2 Corinthians makes a powerful statement. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And I want to make sure we're all there together. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 starting at verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 starting in verse 5. Are, are, Are we ready? If you're there, say amen. All right, let's go. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Examine one another and see whether one another is in the faith. Is that what it says? I see some people saying, no, read the Bible as it's written. Don't be changing the words. Thank you for catching that. 
but because it, it, God's appeal to us it is not to examine one another, but rather to, what does it say? Please read it with me. Examine yourselves. Brother Ross, take a look at yourself. Whither you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. You could personalize this verse and plug your own name in there. I could do the same. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Coming back to, to the article I was quoting from, fascinating statement, says, Christian brethren, talking to all of us, as Christ ambassador, I entreat you to inquire into the character of your thoughts, tempers, purposes, words, and works during the past year. What's been the nature of your experience? Compare the record of your religious life with the Bible standard and pass judgment upon yourselves. Well, brothers and sisters, as I study the word, the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, brothers and sisters, there is somebody who knows deep down inside our hearts, and that is our great God. And so that's the reason we echo the words of Scripture, search me, O God, and know my heart. Or, or better yet, let's go to, uh, to Psalms chapter 51. Let's listen into this beautiful, heartfelt prayer of David, who is known as a man after God's own heart, but who had wandered away like that sheep we just heard in the song, and, and who realized his horrible mistake, his terrible sin, and cried out to God in, uh, in Psalms chapter 51, verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according According to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. I love verse 7. Please don't miss verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be, help me finish it, whiter than snow. Is that our desire today? Here at the beginning of the week, here at the beginning of the year, 2021, do we want to be whiter than snow? Again, quoting from the article, it says, the church militant is not the church triumphant. Earth is not heaven. We have been vividly reminded of that this week. Earth is not heaven. Even the church is composed of erring, imperfect men and women who are but learners in the school of Christ to be trained, disciplined, educated for this life and for the future immortal life. No one of us can in our own strength represent the character of Christ. But if Jesus lives in the heart, the Spirit dwelling in him, him will be revealed in us. All our lack will be supplied. Who will seek at the beginning of this new year to obtain a new and genuine experience in the things of God? Make your wrongs right as far as possible. Confess your errors and sins one to another. Let all bitterness and wrath and malice be put away. Let patience, long-suffering, kindness, and love become a part of your very being. Then whatsoever things are pure and lovely and of good report will mature in your experience. Another year with its spotless record is before us. What will that record be? Well, let's travel back to God's Word and let's listen 
listen again to our friend Paul. And let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Notice with me Philippians chapter 4. And let's, the, the whole chapter is great, but let's zoom in to verses 7 and 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Notice it says, The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He wants to keep us all through 2021. All the way to his kingdom. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming soon. We are closer to His coming than ever before. And here is a beautiful blueprint in verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Once again, quoting from the article, it says, The perfection of our Savior's character awakens the admiration of angels and of men. Here is an exhaustless theme for thought. That's a pretty long word. What is exa- uh, help, help me simplify it. Exhaustless. What does that mean? Unending. Never stops. Never runs out. Uh, you, you can read a book from cover to cover and eventually get the end chapter. But thinking about the beautiful, perfect character of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who died on the cross so that our sins can be washed away and so that we can have a character that is fit to live in the presence of a holy God and to live throughout eternity with the angels and those who've never sinned. What a trans. Formation. They, speaking of the angels, veil their faces before Him as He sits upon His throne. They cast their crowns at His feet and sing His triumphs as they behold His resplendent glory. Oh, but our souls tend to become cold and dull. You know why? Because we do not dwell upon the matchless charms of our Redeemer. If we occupy our thoughts in contemplating His love and mercy, we shall reflect the same in our life and character. For by beholding, we, help me finish it, become changed. All the mysteries of redemption, only by exalting Jesus and abasing self can we celebrate aright the birth of the Son of God. I, I, I should stop there, but uh, the next paragraph's too good. I can't, I can't skip it. And, and if you want a copy of the article for your study, I'm skipping through some very beautiful passages. But uh, it says, as we be- stand on the threshold of a new year, there is need of an impartial examination of our hearts to dispel the pleasing illusions of self-love. Our condition is helpless and hopeless. Should I put a period there? I am so glad there is not a period there. Because even though, yes, our condition's helpless and hopeless, unless infinite mercy is granted us daily and pardon is written against our names in the heavenly records, those only who seal and feel their spiritual necessities will go to Jesus for that help which they so much need and which He only can give. He alone can cleanse us from all sin. He alone can place upon us the robe of righteousness. 
That's the reason in Scripture there's a powerful verse in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 12. Psalms 90, verse 12. So teach us, Psalms 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. What's wisdom? Bible answers that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. James 1, 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not. He's not a respecter of persons. It shall be given us. I pray today we hear a call to come humbly to the foot of the cross and ask Jesus to make us right with Him. He may be your best friend and you may walk closer to Him every single day. Praise God, today is a chance for you to get even closer. Or maybe as you pause and look into your heart, you know there's some things that He needs to wash away. There's some things that He needs to cleanse. Today is the day for Him to make you and me a brand new person. And I'm thankful that the Seventh-day Adventist Church practices open communion, which means anyone who would like to participate is invited and welcome to join in whichever parts of the service that they are comfortable in. I'm thankful that we begin with the ordinance of humility, following Jesus' example of, uh, of washing His disciples' feet. And we have a room down this hallway set aside for ladies, set aside for men, and set aside for families. We encourage and invite you to share in this special time of renewing our connection with God and with one another. If there's something you need to make right, now's the perfect time to do that. If the person you need to talk to isn't here, lots of us have cell phones and the church has a landline, it would be a beautiful way to bring healing in, in this special day. But as we prepare our hearts following the service, if you choose not to participate, please just reverently, quietly remain here and uh, we'll come back in. And I believe the instructions are to sit on rows that do not have, is that correct? that do not have one of the um, special uh, orange claws. That allows it easier for our deacons to serve the emblems. And let me also mention, with this crazy virus thing going around, if you are more comfortable wearing a mask and you need one, you're welcome. We have extras you're welcome to use, but it's not required. Likewise, if you want gloves, we have them, if you, uh, but they're not required. We pray that as we share this service, the bread representing the broken body of our Savior, the grape juice representing His spilled blood, that as we share this service together, we have one thought on our mind. Jesus. Jesus. Father in heaven, thank You that You long to wash us clean, that You long to cover us with Your robe of perfect righteousness. And today, as we begin this new year, we ask for that experience afresh as we share this service together. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we dismiss, I would invite you to sing with me that old campfire chorus, I have decided to follow Jesus. God bless you.